Hello, in this video I'm going to be discussing how to add a component file into LT Spice based on a subcircuit file. Um, I have another video that explains how to do this for a Zener diode. In this case I thought it'd be good to make another video because um, I'm using some other, some other circuits in lab that require multiple connections, more than just two. In this case an MMOS uh, transistor. Uh, in this case it's really important to know what the different nodes correspond to. Uh, hopefully there's some comments in this one. Uh, this is for the 2N7000 uh, MOSFET, N NPM MOSFET from on semiconductor. So in this video I'm going to show how to create a component that is reusable in LTSpice based on this subcircuit file. So the first thing you're, go you're going to want to do is to copy this file. I'll put the link to this file in the source or in the description of this video. Um, and it's also important to note that node 1 will be the drain, node 2 will be the gate, and node 3 will be the source uh, connection. So next thing what we have to do is open up something like Notepad++ or Notepad. Uh, either one works, and we're just going to paste it in there. So now you'll see it's a subcircuit file, just all the text. You'll notice it starts with dot .subcircuit. Anything with an asterisk is a comment, and at the bottom it says dot .ends and then the name of the subcircuit. So you want the whole thing. In the other video, I also had a Zener diode where it was one of many, so I only copied the, the Zener diode that I needed. Next thing you're going to want to do is save as. Uh, change the save as type to all types. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to LT Spice folder. It's usually in your documents folder, so LT Spice, lib, and then sub, because this is going to be a subcircuit file. I usually name this the exact same thing that the subcircuit is called. So in this case, it's called 2N7000. So I call it 2N7000.sub. That way I know it's a subcircuit file. And then we're going to save it. Next step is we're going to open up LT Spice. I already have it open here. And we're also going to want to find that file in our, uh, in our file explorer. You can get here multiple ways. Usually the easiest for me is to do Windows E or click here for documents, or if you have it on your start menu, open it up. We're going to want to go to LT Spice, lib, sub, and we're going to want to find that file. Now, if you're having trouble finding it, just do date modified to the top for the most recent. And then what we're going to want to do is drag this over into LT Spice. Now, that's just going to put the text file in there. I'll make this larger. And now that it's in LT Spice, you're going to want to highlight the name of the subcircuit, right click on it, and do create symbol. It's going to ask you if you want to create a symbol that will netlist against this subcircuit and her three ports. So you want to say yes to that. And then this pops up. Now this is a fully functional uh, subcircuit now component. It's available. I'll show you. Um, if I open up a new schematic and I open up the component menu, which is also F2 as a shortcut. If you look under auto generated in this little folder here, that's where it's going to be. So if I click OK, boom, there it is. And now the tricky part is that one was the um, drain, two was the gate, and three was the source. And we can confirm that by looking at these comments here. One, two, three, drain, gate, source. Now that's a little bit confusing because in most NMOS transistors, you'll have gate on the left, drain on the top, and source on the bottom. So that's kind of a little bit confusing because it's almost like it's flipped and kind of mixed up a little bit. So the thing that I want to show today is how to actually turn this into a nice, similar looking uh, component as the NMOS that's just like the basic one that comes with it. And I'm sure that there's other ways to get these things in there, but this is just a simple way to do it. So back on the uh, skim or the symbol file, the dot, dot .asy, uh, we're going to be using some shortcuts, so you can either click the scissors up here or do control X. We can get rid of that yellow box. It's not needed anymore. Uh, we can use the move to get these symbols out of the way. Anything you draw will be centered around this circle and cross, and also the nodes have to be on a have to be on one of these dots. Otherwise, they don't work. Um, that's where the wires can connect to, and that's where they'll snap to. So you just have to make sure that your wires match up. In this case, we can just kind of put these in the general area that they'd be, which is something like that. That should work. And then we can start drawing. So under draw, there's a few different things you can do. Lines, rectangles, circles, arcs, etc., etc. We're going to just start with a little line. Um, the first thing I'm going to draw is the arrow, kind of a skinny arrow. 
And then I'm going to base everything off of that. Okay, if you right click, it, it makes it to where you can move it to somewhere else. Then I'm going to come up here and go down to probably this second node. Because that'll be kind of handy. That's where I can put the three. And from there, I'm going to make a, a line here so it'll look kind of similar to the, to the existing one. And maybe another another one here, a small one. And maybe another small one here. I'm going to actually put that all the way up there. So then if I switch to move, I can move this back up. And pop that one on that one. And then for this, we're going to want to do another line. So L is the shortcut for that. Let's go about halfway, let's say. Okay, now that's pretty close. The other thing that I like to do is to make these numbers disappear. So now I already know that that is going to be the drain, this is going to be the source, and this is going to be the gate. And now that it's a symbol, it's pretty easy to see that. So that's pretty handy. Um, I'm going to put these closer now so that they're just easier to see. And this is all going to work. Now, if I save this, either with clicking the little floppy symbol or Control S, you'll notice that our new our symbol actually updated over here too before it was that yellow square and now that's not perfect right it doesn't completely match but it's pretty dang close and you should be able to tell from this diagram that it is an in MOS transistor um, or a MOSFET an MPM MOSFET and you'll notice that you can go ahead and connect wires to it so you'll see wire to that one you know so on and so forth you can connect wires between these nodes and it all works just fine the only thing that it doesn't update when you're moving it is these. These don't automatically go over to the side, except for if you add a new, a new component from auto-generated, they will, they will start there. So that's how you do it. Um, just make sure you save it. If you want to do another thing that I like to do, add a text. So that's T is a shortcut. And if you're new to this, and you just always want to make sure you know what is what, I'm going to mark the drain, the gate, and the source. So I'm going to make the font size really small. I'm just going to put a little D right there. I'm going to use the copy command just to save time to move these different things. And then if you right click on them, you can change the name of it. Just make sure that you don't change these. These labels need to stay the same. You can make them to where they're not visible anymore, but you just don't want to mess with those. If you accidentally delete it, you can always do the undo option here or the redo if you undo something that you didn't mean to. So now when I save that, if we look back over at this draft, now it's, it's handy and marked. Now do you have to do that? No, but it's just something you can do. If you want to perfectly match this, this other symbol on the right, you can do that too. You can take the time. But this is just an example on how to do so. Um, I'll put the link to the, uh, to the file that I found, the subcircuit, and this should work for any others. Um, it might be a little bit trickier if they don't have good comments that explain where, where the different nodes correspond to, like drain, gate, and source, but it should be pretty simple. Um, Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section below. Thanks.